morning and welcome to the thorough newspaper analysis of 4th March 2022. Today, we have the article Counting EWS, which is taken from the Indian Express editorial. And following that, we will have the news update and legal news, which is a part of Law Seekers initiative to keep the readers and its students updated with the current affairs happening in and around India. So before we delve into today's articles, it is about the 10% reservations which were to be granted to individuals from the economically weaker sections. The criterion was that these individuals could not belong from SCs, STs and OBCs. This, this was back in January 2019 when the government of India promised that 10% reservation shall be granted to individuals belonging from economically weaker sections of the society and who were not covered under SCs, STs, and OBCs. So the eligibility to get an EWS certificate was that the family income had to be less than 8 lakhs per annum. Agricultural land, if the family had access to the same, had to be less than 5 acres. In case the family had a residential flat, then the same had to be less than 1,000 square feet. And if the family had a residential plot, it had to be less than 100 or 200 square yards based on the circumstances. So the EWS inclusion or the EWS reservation had been challenged in Supreme Court where the Apex Court wanted to delve into the statistics based on which the government determined that 8 lakhs per annum would be a suitable upper bracket for the 10% reservation. So for today, we are going to base our analysis on the periodic labor force survey data from 2018 to 19. And this survey was carried out in 1,1579 households where they found that 31% of these households did not belong to ST, SC, and OBC category. Now, the reason why PLFS data is considered invaluable in this case is that it covers all sectors of the Indian economy. And out of the 31% households that did not belong to any of the reserved categories prior, it was found that 99% of these rural households and 95% of these urban households earned way below 8 lakh. The median household income in urban areas is almost four times less than the upper limit of the EWS quota. For the rural households, it was almost six times less. The data also suffers from two primary limitations. Firstly, the data is taken weekly. So the average reading could vary based on the time of the year. Now, as we are aware that in case of the agrarian economy or the people who belong, who are employed in the informal sector, work is not always available. There is a factor of seasonal employment. Since this data, uh, since this data bases its findings on the amount earned by your family in a week, the same data can't be said to be a proper valuation of the condition of the household based on a yearly basis. The definition of family under the PLFS data is also not very clear. Based on the PLFS definition, a family is a group of people who eat from the same kitchen. However, whether this definition is the same that shall be followed for the EWS inclusion is not yet determined. The problem that we now have at hand is that the enormous EWS inclusion there is no data on how this cutoff was reached. And secondly, the data collected from PLFS suggests that there are more than 90% non-reserved families which fall under the bracket that serves as the limit for EWS. So moving forward from here, how the government decides to tackle this problem and how they will make available the 10% reservation is a story that is yet to be seen. For news updates, we have Chennai's Adhir Eco Park to be redeveloped. A redevelopment plan for the next 10 years has been approved for the ecological landmark Tholkapiya Punga. The same aims at augmenting the park's nursery while also promoting the urban wetland ecosystem. The Adir Creek and Estuary is situated on the eastern part of Thiru. Secondly, we have Jumbo to get village defense groups. The Ministry of Home Affairs has allowed the formation of village defense groups in Jammu and Kashmir. The VDC is known to have supported the Indian Army immensely during the terror attacks of 1990s from on the on the other side of the border. Next up, we have the 28-year-old woman set to become the new Chennai mayor. Our Priya is a 28-year-old councillor from Ward 74 of Dravida Munnetra Kazhagam. She is set to become the mayor on behalf of DMK and the same is to happen unopposed. M. Akesh Kumar is set to become the deputy mayor. 
This is the first time a Chennai mayor has been reserved for a Dalit woman candidate. For legal news, we have Section 65 of Contract Act, principle of restitution not applicable when party claiming it is equally or more responsible for the illegality of the contract. The Supreme Court held that in a restitution suit where the party claiming the same is equally or more responsible for the illegality of the contract, the provisions of Section 65 of the Indian Contract Act will not apply. In such claims, it is the onus of the court to determine the illegality which caused the contract to become void and the role of the party claiming such restitution in it. Secondly, we have UB Urban Rent Regulation Act. Landlord need not be unemployed to seek eviction on the ground of bona fide need, Supreme Court. The Supreme Court held that it is not necessary for the landlord to be unemployed while seeking eviction on the ground of bona fide requirements under Section 21A of the Uttar Pradesh Urban Buildings Regulation of Letting, Rent and Eviction Act 1972. The provision, according to SC, states that the landlord must be bona fide and that is the sole criterion. So this was all for today. Press the subscribe button to get notified about further videos. You can also join the Telegram channel with the given QR code on the screen. And you can also join our Instagram channels based on these handles. Thank you so much for having us.